and um, Kenyans were shocked by what we were told were banditry attacks in Nadome earlier this month. We're told 400 heavily armed people came in. There was chaos. Many lives have been lost. We still don't know the exact numbers. You've come in from Nadome just recently. Tegla, what did you find on the ground? Uh, thank you very much, Julie. Uh, I was in Nairobi during the attack. And every time I, I was just listening negative and nobody wanted to tell the truth. And for me, I say, you know what, before I come to the studio, I don't want to be like the others. And that's when I decided to, uh, to go down and then call our, our reformed warriors to go with me mm -hmm. all the way to Nadomi. I thought it was a very close place. Right. Reaching the Malikot wasn't easy. Going all the way, half it. What we met, there was no roads. We were to look how to go inside, mm -hmm. reaching the big river. So some of us were very short. We had to remove our clothes up to here. We did not care the men or, or, or who was around us. So you had to cross the river on foot? And then our car got stuck. Mm -hmm. We pushed the car for two hours with small hands. And later on, the, some of the, the heads, people who were taking care of the animals, came and helped us. Mm -hmm. And then we were able to go. The next river again, we, we caught again, and then we had now to leave our car, and we say no, we are not going to go back, and uh, we had to walk. How long did it take you to get there? It took us like uh, one hour, and later on, when we met the people, because they came from where they, 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 they were living, because they couldn't stay there where the, the dead bodies the dead were. Bodies, yeah. And uh, on the way, Julie, we met with the, with the young men that they... They have a lot of wounds. We had no medicine. We were able to give aspirins that we had. So you found the people there first and foremost. In total, how long did it take you to get there? You walked for an hour, you say, when you left the car. Yeah, we but walked in total, more than in total, what was the journey? What was the period of the journey? We started uh, at 7 from Jimalingot. And then by 3, we reached okay. the place. Okay, and then you found people who had been displaced because they could not leave. They could not stay where the rotting corpses yeah, yeah, yeah. were. What is your appeal? As, as we sit here, and we have some people who are, are sending messages in and asking, ask Tegla Lorupe, mm. is this banditry? You've, you've, you've lived in this region. You understand the nature of these conflicts. Is this banditry? Uh, is this normal banditry? It's not a normal thing because when I sat down with, uh, with the community, because we met almost like 300 people, they had, we were coming and also carrying food. But they wanted to, 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 to sit and listen to us, from us, sorry. And there was a woman who lost the family, the nine, the nine people from the family, mm -hmm. and she told us, I've lived with the, uh, with the Turkanas for, for many years. There was no way where a Turkana can, can just cut a small baby, can cut a pregnant woman, can just kill somebody. And after they, they are fighting, some of these people remain in the houses. Normally our men can fight and take the animals mm -hmm. and never, never, even one time, an enemy stay, stay inside right. the house of the right. enemy. He said, you know what, they are, not a, they are not a normal Turkana. Okay, Turkana came probably with other people because I'm sorry to say this. This is the information that we got from mm -hmm. them and they don't lie. Tell us. They say, okay, they had people with signs and the signs are either from Sudan mm -hmm. because we, they know their signs. And they had the cut of Merile, and we know where the Merile comes from. So and they cannot speak. Uh, you, you have this podium and an opportunity to give a message to the leadership today, yes. and also to the Kenyans and the citizenry who are watching. Please, Tegla, what's your message? One of my messages is to tell Kenyans, and also our, especially our leaders, that those areas is the area where it has been forgotten. When we walk almost more than 50 kilometers there, I think we saw only s two schools, mm -hmm. just two schools and no very medical centers. No, it was a small dispensary. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a dispensary. Mm -hmm. When the roads are not there, and we are here blaming our security forces, I think it's unfair because there is no police station there. How can you blame the police? We have to blame everybody in the government, those who are on top, because. When the people fought, fought from, l from 5 in the morning mm -hmm. until midday, right. and they were tired, it's all like we were tired. They, exhaust, they, were, they exhausted. were exhausted, that's why they stopped. And then now we are saying, where are the government? 
we should say where are the roads. Okay, so you're saying infrastructure, infrastructure is critical. Infrastructure. Thank you so much for joining us, Tegla, to share your views. And we hope to get pictures of your experience to share them with people. Sure. Um, the message to government, infrastructure, 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 get the roads there, but also get the police on the ground, open up the area so that you can indeed address the insecurity issues. We appreciate your time. Now,